I'd say this is not our typical, uh, not our typical Friday afternoon drive here. We just left uh, Eagle Plains a little bit ago, just crossed the Arctic Circle, and we're on this stretch of road that I guess frequently gets closed due to uh, high winds, and whiteout conditions, and it was just closed last night before we got here. They reopened it. When we passed through, it was open, but it looks like, you know, we might be getting to those whiteout conditions again. Uh, so who knows, they might close it behind us. We, uh, we're a long ways from Anubik at this point, so all we can do is just try to keep moving and uh, keep pushing on through if we can. This is unbelievable. In the Arctic, you got it. <laughs> yeah, but we need to get out of this valley. That's the main reason why we're having this much problem right now. I have to imagine there's there's guys out there sledding right now. They left from uh, Eagle Plains last night, and it's a uh, dog sledding race. They, they gotta be out here in this somewhere. Can you imagine that? to the border of the Yukon and the Northwest Territories. And uh, we're experiencing some winds approaching uh, 30 miles an hour. I just measured it with the little Brent wind speed uh, device. Crazy stuff. What's the temp? Uh, it's about one degree right now, Fahrenheit. I got outside to take some photos. I was actually leaning into the wind. If, if the wind had stopped, I would have fallen over backwards, but it was actually holding me up. Crazy. And then, and then I, I felt a little bit of a thump, and then it was okay. Who knows? Just start driving, see what, see what it does. I'm gonna turn the lights back. Maybe just the HIDs. Feel like it's doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, it was just really weird. Whatever it was. I can see the ice building up on the drive line, the drive shaft in the back. So it must have been that you know the liquid was dripping down from the hot undercarriage yeah. onto the drive shaft and the CV axles, and uh, actually creating ice. And then when you took off, it popped free. So that uh, that popping noise that we thought was the drive line, it's it's just as soon as we stop for any length of time, the warm tires melt, start to melt the road surface and then refreeze, yeah. and you actually have to peel the tire away so it pops away from the ground surface. So there's actually no, nothing wrong with the truck. It's just uh, it's so it's so cold that uh, any heat that's uh, on the surface of an object is just being peeled away by the, by the wind chill. A 
Hello, sir. How are you? Good. Yourself? Doing well. It's just you guys traveling. Nobody just, behind you? I haven't seen anybody behind us. Okay, I got to close. Uh, I got the gates locked up here. You're apparently the last truck to make it through. Oh, I think so. Okay. The wolf up there. Yeah, the conditions were pretty bad. We just met up with uh, one of the First Nation people that uh, are working these gates that control traffic um, between Fort McPherson and uh, Eagle Plains. And uh, we were fortunate that we were the last vehicle to get through before they closed down the road uh, going north. And we can certainly see why, because uh, we had distances of several hundred yards that we had uh, less than 10 feet of visibility. Um, very intense driving conditions. We, uh, we had very poor uh, visibility even on the road. Couldn't see anything off the road. Uh, there were stakes that were lining the highway or the, um, the road here that uh, were the only guide that we had driving forward. Uh, without polarized, polarized glasses we couldn't even see one stake ahead. Uh, with the polarized glasses we could kind of make out the third stake before uh, crossing the first one and they were probably at a distance of about 10 feet apart. Uh, in amazing conditions. Uh, one of the most interesting driving uh, conditions I've, I've been in so far. So on top of that, right as we stop to talk to this guy, he tells us there's a wolf up on the ridge. So we got some shots with the, the still camera and the video camera. Wolf was a little too far to uh, probably be a really high quality picture, but at least we know we got, we got to see some wolves. There was actually more than one. And uh, as we pulled up on the hill, I got out of the truck and walked a little ways out there, got a little bit of a closer shot, but they're, they're still pretty far off. So hopefully we'll get to see them on the way back. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Where are you guys from? Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> so we came from one. Of, <laughs> we came from one of the warmest places to one of the coldest. So yeah. it was uh, uh, 90, 90 degrees Fahrenheit in Phoenix when we left. <laughs> Spring is almost here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even after he pointed them out to us. We could barely tell if that was what they were or not, you know. One of the really interesting and enjoyable things about traveling is the unexpected. The fact that you envision something to be one way and it turns out being completely different. For example, when we crossed the McKinsey River for the first time, 
I was expecting this steep and difficult approach down to the river where we'd go out on this smooth glare ice where traction would be low and we could see all the way to the water below. It ended up being completely different. The approach was smooth and the river was covered in snow and other than the fact that the trees were broken in that one area, we would have never known that we were actually out on the ice.